whole exercise was a triumph from uh, process over common sense. And let me tell you why. It was obvious in the first place that there was no other decision logically to make. You know, they're, they're, we're talking about one extra tanker a day going through the Salish Sea waters. Uh, there already are 1,300 uh, ships, car, car, I should say, tankers and, and tug-pulled uh, petroleum barges a year. There are 10,000 large ships, at least as large or, as, as those big crude carriers, going through those waters a year. There are, there are t thousands or hundreds, at least, of great big cruise ships going through those same waters. And there are thousands of big of these very large BC ferries. On, on top of that, like tens of thousands of small boats, per personal boats. So to think that one ship a day addition was needed as a big study to prove, to show that this wasn't going to have a big negative effect on the existing situation was ridiculous in the first place. What, if you're going to look at all of the impact on the whales, you have to look at all those ships, and that's not the NEB's job. That's somebody else's job. Would you hope now, given the fact that the federal government is the owner of this pipeline, they use our money, our taxpayer money, to buy it, and now they have the NAB saying, we think you should go ahead, that they can expedite the matter? They've had 90 days now to do their additional consultation with, uh, with the indigenous groups. I mean, that, this whole process, and that's what this is all about now at this, at this point. Uh, you know, there were 131... Uh, native groups or indigenous groups consulted by Kinder Morgan. There was the same number at the hearing. There were 17,000 ans questions answered. Then the, the government of Canada decided that that wasn't enough. They were going to do it even better, saying that the Harper government didn't do it well enough. So they're going to go back with a bunch of ministers. And they've done that. They said they've been doing that over the last number, the last 90 days, uh, and have to, to see another 117 indigenous groups. So if they haven't had enough consultation over those 90 days and they continue to defer, then I think the industry has every reason to give up hope on this government. Earlier I spoke with John Manley. He knows his way around Ottawa. I, we heard from Rachel Notley when she answered questions from the media. Both of them sounded optimistic that in an election year that the Trudeau Liberals would like to get some shovels into the ground on this before the vote to show Canadians they've made progress. Do, do you have that same optimism? Well, the reality is that they should have been able to announce at the same time as the NEB or just a few days later that they've concluded that they've had the consultations and they're moving ahead. There's absolutely no reason at all why they haven't had enough time to do that. So if they don't do that in the next few days, uh, then it means they're, they're delaying. And you have to come back right to the same point of all, the beginning of this government, that they were against the, the idea of pipelines. They, they, they canceled or, or rejected three other ones. And, uh, and now they've got the last one, and they've had time to figure it all out, do their consultation, and move ahead. So, um, you know, I worry about their their real uh, sincerity about actually wanting to build a pipeline if they haven't got, if they can't announce now after all that. So you're really holding their feet to the fire. You're not saying 90 days. You're saying if you don't see something by next week, then you don't think they're sincere about getting this project done. Well, my point is they've had 90 days, which is the amount of time that the NEB had. And they're supposed to be doing all that consultation during those same that same period. They had three months to do it on top of all those other consultations I outlined earlier. So they should have been ready. If they're really sincere about getting this pipeline built, they should have been able, ready to announce the, the, the commencement of construction at the, as soon as the NEB came down there, brings down their, uh, their decision. If they don't, then one has to question whether they're really serious about building this pipeline. They're heading, of course, into a fall election. Uh, from the people I talked to in the energy patch in Western Canada, a lot of them are not pleased with this government. If, if they can deliver on this in a timely fashion, can they change their political fortunes, or is there a lot more to it than just Trans Mountain? Well, I think it's, it's more the other way around. It's, it's if they can't. Because if they can't get this project done, which they own, and after all of this, this incredible consultation and all of this unnecessary review by the, the additional review by the NDP, if they can't get, the pro, get on with that project now, then what does it say about Canada's ability to do anything? So it's a bigger picture here.
Now, you know the business obviously very well from your track record. If they can get the shovels in the ground and get the expansion complete, uh, this, as I said, you, me, everyone in Canada, we own this asset. Do we have a good chance of selling it for more than what we had to pay for it? Oh, well, there's no question about that. I mean, we've been, you know, even during this 90 days, a lot of those days until they did some re reduction of production in Alberta, there was six, 50 to $60 million a day going out the day, out the window, mostly to subsidize American refiners. So that was the cost of this 90 days already. For, that's each day I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, the, the thing is that they really have to, uh, re they've already cost uh, so much more and delayed so much more. And I, you know, I have a lot of contacts in the industry and, and you know, it's, it's every day I hear more layoffs. I hear more people uh, really thinking they don't have a future. I have people with their mortgages and other issues. And you know what? They don't think the government of Canada cares. So... That's an excerpt from uh, a interview with the former CEO of Encana. Perhaps many of you have already seen it. Um, all credit to BNN Bloomberg for it. Um, but essentially it was published on February 25th of this year. What I find sad is that <clears throat> it's actually not sad. It's a horrible tragedy for Canadians whose livelihoods depend on this industry and a prediction the fact of the matter is that the government despite owning it despite uh, uh, their surface um, attempts to consult and you heard it here the consultations were excessive in every way a hundred and thirty one indigenous groups consulted 17,000 questions answered um, and then another uh, inquiry into by, by the NEB into the the whole thing because they wanted to repeat and 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 do the whole study again better than before uh, in addition to the studying of ships in the the harbor tens of thousands of ships and only one extra tanker to pass through um, ridiculous till it's blue in the face is something along the lines of what I'm I'm seeing described here and uh, well what I think is that Trudeau will actually sell the pipeline to the indigenous or give it to them I don't know it, it's for me, it's it's hard to, to say at this time, but I think more likely to sell it. And the consultations were a pretense to delay. We all know that now. Now his government is elected again. Um, I'm looking over this article just because it happened to be in, in, in the videos. Um, it's with a heavy heart that I, I, I look at this industry um, and of course it brings into uh, you know recent memory that in Canada is leaving and changing their name and so on and so forth uh, so another oil company lost and, and gone to the US um, the market is just very friendly in the US for producers of well energy companies not uh, not here in Canada energy companies will look at uh, Canada's economic climate as uh, very dangerous very unstable unpredictable and unfavorable um, much like the United States was under Obama and uh, an environment in which business is not welcome and uh, you know I just I feel terrible about it I feel that uh, everything to do with that industry really is the life's blood of this country and there's nothing that we can do except well we have done what we could do in the West anyhow 
Uh, we voted against Trudeau and he has very little representation. The Liberals have very little representation here. Um, but again, like this is the point. I've heard callers come on the radio many times complaining about that the election was decided before, uh, or pardon me, even before they got the, the results um, here in the West. The reason they say that is because they already predict that Quebec and Ontario would have more or less supported Trudeau. And uh, wherever the most seats are, that's where the government gets elected. So um, it's the election system that's flawed. Uh, first past the post, of course, and then the the, elect, the uh, election seats by, by population. But really it's unfair because uh, like the East and the West, well... We're all Canadians, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, the East voted that Prime Minister back in. If they're, if if you want to break it right down, riding by riding, Trudeau, if the Western values had prevailed, Trudeau would never have been re-elected, as evidence um, from what you see from uh, the study of the regions in which there are Conservatives and the regions in which there are Bloc Québécois and NDP and and of course liberals but uh, by popularity and this is the other thing I found odd is that in the past the ballots has always been who would you favor as a leader and then it would list it and this election there was no <laughs> there was no checkbox for which leader you prefer at least on my ballot there wasn't so it was only vote for this party so, as I understand it, Andrew Scheer was the most popular leader by vote, and Trudeau wasn't. So, you know, I don't understand what can be said more about the issue. The issue is already done. The issue is discussed. The East seems to only accept a Prime Minister from the East. Stephen Harper is the only person in my memory who actually succeeded, because he was born in Ontario, number one, but educated in Alberta. Um, and he, is, he holds the record for the most successful Conservative, in my view. A true Conservative, I mean it's it's that simple and many of us lamented losing him now um, but at the time it's like the, the media wanted to crucify him for the Mike Duffy scandal which he instructed Duffy to pay back the money and it wasn't even taxpayer money you could debate that if you wish but I mean that's that's the truth it is it's actually pathetic that despite the overwhelming majority against this Prime Minister in the West that he can still represent the country's interest despite how the vote went and it's obvious that the vote went unfavorably for him in the West um, I have like many Canadians that that uh, like are out of work, I have no confidence in the future that this this vision that this government has for the future of our country, because I think it's uh, in it's powered by ideologues. There is no simpler way to put it. It's a radicalist idea that's driving it, and uh, their goal is not jobs. Their goal is not to put pipelines in the ground. Their goal is to utterly phase it out or alienate us. And they've done so. So, I mean, 
this uh, ex CEO of Encana, you know, he says it very respectfully. You know, that, that everything that you're seeing there, the the so-called experts who are trying to be oper um, <laughs> part of me, um, optimistic about the liberal government, that's nonsense. That's a naive approach, an unrealistic approach, and. Uh, I really do believe that that pipeline will never will never get built and it will continue to be delayed and delayed until the liberals can find out if they can sell it to the indigenous peoples whom um, will wish to purchase it that's my prediction so uh, you know I just I feel very much that the country is extremely divided and that Wexit will be increasingly popular as this government squeezes us uh, and backs us in a corner. And, uh, you know, there's been rallies and so on and so forth that's that's demonstrated peacefully and, and very reasonably, in my opinion, um, the need for oil. And, uh, you know... There is a very severe danger behind ignoring the people whom you govern, and that movement is growing. It's it's not something to be taken lightly. Jason Kenney and Scott Moe have already hinted about this. Like, we're not going to give in on this issue. Our provinces that we represent this is a very important issue for us so unless you start treating us fairly in regards to the carbon tax to the equalization tax uh, you're going to have a severe problem on your hands so it's it's not even a threat it's just a statement of facts at this moment it's not a threat so you know it's it's to me, I actually lost a lot of heart during the election because it's it's when you look at how it turns out, I, I understand and I feel for those people who's who when they went to vote, they, they vote with no hope because they know that that the in the East Trudeau will be elected already. They, they the results will be in and, you know, our votes, we, we did our our civil duty and so on. And we, we voted and but there's no hope. Nobody thought Sheer would win. Certainly not me. If you want to hear my opinion, they're well documented in these videos. I, I hoped that Maxime would at least retain his seat, but uh, when he lost it, I just said, oh, no. But, you know, that's... It happened as it did, and we're stuck. So... I hate to end on, 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 a, on a sad note, but the future is bleak, my friends. And uh, this is just the beginning. The carbon tax will hit us hard, and I don't know what Kenny or Scott Moe can do to, to mitigate the effects. But I really, really don't want to see it pass. And if it does pass and they force the carbon tax on us, I will be in complete favor of separation. And I'm not going to, to skirt the issue anymore. I am more and more in favor of separation just by judging the way this government has handled us. And uh, the truth is, is that, uh, you know, it, the fact that there's no Western representation except for the Conservative Party um, and the grand opposition is... is it's got a voice, but it's far too weak to be effective at this time. Trudeau has almost got a majority. 15 more seats and he's good. So. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I hate to end on a sad note, but the future doesn't look very strong as, as for a united Canada. And uh, that's all I can say. Thank you for your time and attention. Goodbye.